Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks for coming along. Um, as the title suggests, we are very keen to talk to you today about business recovery planning. It's something that we're doing with a lot of our clients at the moment. It's something we're getting a lot of questions about. Obviously, pretty well every business has been affected some way, either positively or negatively, sadly, mostly negatively in this whole COVID crisis. And I guess really we're at the stage now where we don't really want to focus on, on the negative there. We'd like to focus on how businesses can recover from this and move forward. Now, there's been a lot of discussion out there and there was a lot of talk earlier about what the recovery curve would look like for the economy, what the recovery curve would look like for different businesses. One thing we're noticing is kind of varying from business to business. You know, some are bouncing back relatively quickly. Some it's a lot more gradual. Um, some, you know, the worst still could be yet to come for them, which is, which is something that needs to be needs to be planned for. So I want to make this session um, as interactive as, as we can. I'm guessing a few on the call would have used Zoom a time or two in the last couple of months. And um, so a couple of instructions there. If you don't have any questions at all, by all means jump in, ask a question any time. There will be time dedicated time for questions at the end. But if something pops up, meantime we'll do our best to cover that as we go. So with me today is Brent Rudman. He's one of our senior team leaders here at Quantum Advisory. He's been working very closely with a lot of our clients, helping them in this whole recovery planning process. And um, he spent a lot of time at the coalface with business owners in their businesses, helping them work through what the next what the next few months are going to look like, and then right through to you know what the next 12, 24 months is going to look like as well. So Brent joins us today with a lot of experience. And um, feel free to reach out to us anytime, as said, with any questions, um, either during the session or, of course, afterwards as well. So, a bit of a quote to kick off with, and that is, smooth seas don't make skillful sailors. It's something that most of you would have heard before, but I think it's a timely reminder. And while there's very easy to be caught up in the whole negative of COVID, I think it's a brilliant opportunity to really sort the sheep from the goats when it comes to businesses at the moment. Um, we're noticing that some of the clients we're working with are, are, are using this using this process to really refine systems, become really resilient, um, really cut overheads, and really, I guess, re-engineer their businesses to be as profitable as, as possible. And with the promise that as things do recover, they're going to end up with a better business and they're going to be all the better for having gone through this COVID crisis. I know it's very difficult to see that silver lining at times, but um, there is that promise, as, as, as Joe Biden would say at the moment, um, build, build back better. Um, whether that's, whether that's a, a great analogy. Um, and yeah, personally, I find it a bit hard to believe his wife's a, an English teacher because it doesn't sound like the goodest use of, use of words, but um, that's the opportunity I think that's out there for business owners at the moment to definitely um, definitely be coming out the other side of this stronger. So quick overview of what we're going to look at. We're going to look at um, some of the things that need to be done over the next, ne next few weeks. Um, need to look at some numbers around your personal business finances. Also, leveraging opportunities and overcoming any vulnerabilities and critical challenges that at the um, at the current time. We're going to look at a bit of a process for managing risk. Brent's got some um, really cool, actionable stuff there. We're going to be sharing, and um, I guess how to pull that together and put that into a plan um, moving forward. So you've got some very clear milestones and some very clear action items to to take away from this. So. With that, let's jump in. So the first thing I guess is just a just a bit of a reminder more than anything is that um, we've heard this said a lot, but at the moment, um, a lot of business owners are feeling very, very disconnected. Um, we just encourage anyone that hasn't done so to reach out and create a bit of a network that they can that can help support them. Um, create and connect with a team of people that can support you best. So whether that's service providers, whether that's people like accountants or advisors, um, and obviously don't leave out the, 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 the key partners in your business. Think, thinking there specifically of suppliers, your customers, obviously, keeping in close contact with them, letting them know that, that, um, that you're here to support them throughout the, throughout the crisis. Um, 
and of course staff as well. So making making it very clear to them what the plan is over the next coming weeks, months, years, and um, the part that they play in in helping you overcome this. So I think we're seeing a lot of businesses tackle the whole COVID crisis differently. Um, so we're seeing some um, we're seeing some innovate. Essentially, that there's there's four ways people are going about this. So um, yeah, one clear one is 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 innovating and I guess looking at ways they can put in minimum effort to significantly change the product or service they're currently delivering um, to something that's more marketable in a COVID, in a COVID crisis or COVID situation. So um, one awesome example we saw of this recently was a business that was actually selling travel, travel pillows. Obviously there's not a lot of demand for that at the moment. Um, so they were able to pivot into a few other different lines. One of the things actually moved into was ergonomic support, um, things that could be used in a home office. Um, so small tweaks to their product, but open massive markets for them. Another thing that we're seeing at the moment is business owners um, re-engineering what they're, what they're doing and how they're taking their products and services to market. Um, so once again, this is, this is Putting in, um, putting in the effort to make small changes to, to the products or services you're delivering in, delivering, and um, as a result, opening opening up new markets as well. So, this a classic example of this is the huge amount of alcohol companies we've seen around that have that have um, changed their internal processes slightly and now now producing hand sanitizer. Um, whether every alcohol company needs to be producing hand sanitizer long term is questionable, but it's a short term solution. It's a great plug for them to fill to, to fill the sales void. Um, although at the current time, we think there'd be just as much demand for alcohol as as um, hand sanitizer. Thank you, Brent. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're all kind of coming out of this alcoholics or fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone said to me the other day, I think you come out of this three ways. It's either um, you either come out of this a hunk, a chunk, or a drunk. So, um, yes, yeah, so, so I guess the options are options are still open there. So, um, and I guess another thing that we're seeing business owners do is, is, is adapt and um, absolutely hate the expression, the new normal, but unfortunately COVID has changed a lot of things. And we're seeing a lot of people, you know, being able to take um, services online. People thinking of, of how they can do things in a more of a socially distanced environment. Um, one situation we saw that was working particularly well recently is a business owner that um, runs a skincare um, clinic. Now, obviously, traditionally, that's a very hands-on, very in-your-face, quite literally, service. Um, so she had actually switched her um, switched her business model to being. Um, Zoom and, and, and video conference based consultations. She was also developing a lot of online tools so people could self diagnose based on based on their different symptoms. So um, we're seeing a lot of a lot of businesses adapt, and that's and that's obviously a great opportunity as well. And I guess the other thing too is 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 just the just the concept of um, of widening your lane. So if you've already got the contacts, if you've already got the supply, if you've already got the customers, um, taking a look at what other things that that customers could be struggling to get at the moment and um, you can potentially provide for them. A classic example of this we've seen is Maccas shifting into in, into grocery space, selling milk and bread in the drive throughs um, Also, the other thing that we've seen there is cafes moving to home delivery models, um, restaurants moving into groceries as well. So essentially taking something that, that, that works well with your core business and seeing how that can be how you can potentially widen your lane and pick up more from existing customers. And with that, I want to hand over to Brent. He's going to step us through a couple of things now relating to personal and business budgets. So, um, Brent, far away. Thanks, John. So, it's really uh, what we're seeing is there's been a natural order um, in the way that the business we've been dealing with um, reinvent their business. So. With business continuity planning, we're really asking you to put your oxygen mask on first. Um, you know, and, and business recovery planning is no different. So the reason is no one wins if there's no business at all. The staff don't win, the community don't win. Um, you know, we need to ensure that the, the business um, is there for the long term. Just rem remember that your business is there to serve you, um, not, the other, not the other way around. So we don't want you to being a slave to your business. 
So first of all, um, the, the first step is just to put your business owner hat on um, and, and have a look at what you need to get from your business. So can you make savings in your personal budget um, that'll help reduce the cash flow strain in your business? Now, no doubt you've already made, made a lot of savings um, and, and you know, can, can these continue? One, one thing that we've seen you know, throughout the last few months is where people have made cuts to their budget um, and you know, ended up having some of the most the profitable periods that they've had. Um, and, and so you know, what, what, what can be learned from, from that? Um, so updating your budget is just best done using, using a bit of a template so you don't miss any expenses. So look at what it's been previously. Um, if, if you don't have any, anything that you've done on your personal budget previously, you know, just start with your bank statement to see what you can pull out, see what you typically spend in a month. Um, and keep it realistic too, because there would be some things that um, haven't happened in the last few months, you know, that, that might start up again. Um, so, so make sure you go far enough back to see what your personal budget needs to be. Now, once you've done your personal budget, you can then start to build up your new business budget for the financial year. Um, so we're going to be starting at the bottom here. Um, now, probably many of you have already done a a business budget, um, but for those of you that haven't, um, you know, do it. Just make it happen. If you haven't done one, you, re you really need to have a budget in place. Um, it ensures that you've, you know, before you've got to the end of the year, you already know what success looks like um, and you're able to track against that. So first of all, we will need to decide what the increase or decrease in cash we need to be. So start on the bottom of that list there. Um, that, that, is, that is the first, first place. So this is what we really call a bottom up process. Um, and, and it's important to start here because what we've found is a lot of businesses when this whole you know, the period of uncertainty hit, they didn't have a war chest of cash that they could rely on. Um, so this is, we're, we're trying to keep it really simple here. We're not, not talking accounting these, um, just keeping keep with simple terms. So now the next thing is we need to look at what cash movements we're gonna have throughout the year. And as you work through this process, you'll this will start to become more clear. But examples of that, um, and, and this is just around movements in your working capital cycle. So an example of that is, um, you know, we've seen some businesses have to increase their stock holdings um, to allow for disruptions in supply chains that happen at the moment. Um, so that would, you know, have obviously a negative impact on your cash. So looking at what those movements are that will be, will be required. The next thing you need to look at is what the loan principles will be that you're going to be repaid over the year. Um, so you need to allow for that. Moving up, you need to allow for any asset purchases that you're going to have throughout the next period up to June 2021. And then the drawing. So this is the figure that you've just got from your revised personal budget. Now all those five points there are all amounts that will have to be paid from your net profit after, after tax. So the total of that is your net profit after tax that you're required. And so that'll be your target net profit. And the next thing to add on top of that is the tax. So if you don't know what your tax is going to be over the next 12 months, um, you, you need to speak to your accountant about that and find out, you know, get, get a forecast of what it's likely to be. So you can allow for that on top. Once you've got worked out those figures there, um, you can then move up to so the total of those two then becomes a net profit that you require before tax. Then, then on top of that, have a careful look at your overheads. So see what, to see if there's any savings that can be made there. Um, and, and the combined of your net profit before tax plus your overheads is then the required gross profit that you need. Now taking that gross profit, uh, divided by your expected gross profit margins for the year, will give you your gross revenue. And then it's just all about reviewing those numbers and ensure you can come up with a re workable revised budget for the financial year 21. Now, once you've pulled this together um, and you'll have the 12 month targets for the year, from there, you'll be able to break it down into a you know, more detailed forecast um, and, and even on a month by month basis. So then you've got something on which to track your process. You've got monthly milestones that you're tracking against. So you know as soon as possible um, where you're getting off track from, from your original forecast. 
Now, once you've got all these figures together, um, you need to look at, at what you're going to measure and, and how you're going to do it. And so this is where having real-time digital reports of your numbers is so important. Um, you know, for example, let's say in the previous exercise, we've identified sales for the year need to be you know, around, say, 500 k um, So that equates over 48 weeks of being open. Um, that equates to around $10,500 per week. So you need to have a system for recording how you're going against that target, just so you can know as soon as possible if you're on track. And next, another thing you, know, you might want to look at is, say your debt, you're offering terms of seven days, um, but your debt is currently taking on average 41 days to pay. So you need to measure how you're going uh, against those targets, but then more importantly, what the trend is as well. Is it going up or is it going down? Um, in these times, you know, cash is more important than ever. Everyone's trying to hang on to whatever dollar they can. Um, but on the flip side, uh, we've had a lot of feedback that you know people are paying really well, um, and that you know, really shows the impact of the stimulus on the on the economy. Most important thing is that you're measuring it because, as the old cliche goes, what gets measured gets improved. Um, so we strongly recommend that you you know measure no more than five of your most important numbers. Um, and we call these your yeah, key performance indicators. And it's, it's really all about focus. If you, if you stick to five and focus on improving those, what you'll find is that other, other measures in your business will improve as a byproduct of just focusing on something. Um, now, as I say, if you try and be good at everything, you end up just being mediocre. Um, so, so we're really talking about just focusing on five. So it might be you know your daily or weekly sales. It could be your GP, um, could be your debtor days, or it could be you know, your your um, free cash flow. Those sorts of things. Then once you've identified those KPIs that you need to track in your budget, it's important that you've got all those numbers you know loaded into a monthly monthly system so you can track your actuals against budget. Um, and then you know we can we can help you with those that sort of thing. Um, so, so that was that's just a bit around a bit around those numbers. Um, so I'll, I'll hand over to Jonathan now to take through the next step of the process. Excellent, Brent. Well, um, we'll just touch briefly on, I guess, the opportunities and vulnerabilities that people are finding at the moment in their business. Obviously, if there are vulnerabilities, we want to make sure that we're completely across them, we're on top of them, and of course, any opportunities there, time is of the essence. So if there are opportunities out there, we want to make sure that we're grabbing those with both hands and um, really leveraging those, particularly while, while our competition may be in a situation where they're kind of reeling from, from the effects of COVID as well. One thing we're finding is that the business, the businesses out there at the moment that are on top of their um, business recovery planning are a lot more confident about um, grabbing hold of those opportunities and, and come from a space where they can make numbers-based decisions on whether they're viable opportunities or not. So a bit like the 5K numbers that Brent was suggesting, one thing that we're suggesting to our clients is they focus only on a handful of opportunities. Don't, don't try and chase every rabbit. And um, I know it's easy to get weighed down by the neg negativity with the whole COVID situation, but there's, there are a lot of opportunities out there. We have mentioned um, a lot of them before, but even just things such as um, the cost of capital at the moment, um, we're seeing historic interest rate lows. So if if it is a financial, financially sustainable um, opportunity for you, then accessing capital is um, is very cheap at the moment. There's obviously a lot of good government stimulus out there. Um, we're seeing a lot of we're seeing a lot of um, shifts take place with personnel in the workplace at the moment as well. Um, and the study recently released by Seek said that um, said that the job security levels that most Aussies are feeling at the moment is historically low. Um, now's the perfect time for headhunting if anybody's sort of, you know, um, confident that they're going to have work with somebody. And things such as um, a lot of other, a lot of, lot of suppliers, a lot of, um, a lot of international companies even are open to negotiation. A lot of people are open to negotiating better, um, better trade terms. Um, then we're also seeing new markets open up. We're seeing opportunities. Um, we've mentioned this before in webinars, webinar series, but unfortunately, even events tra tragic as something like September 11, 
um, gave, gave rise to a whole domestic security market um, that's now huge around the world. So you can see that um, following, following COVID, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of new business opportunity. And um, also, also we're seeing a lot of businesses that haven't got on top of this recovery process um, struggling at the moment and the risk associated with those businesses is high, which, which reflects directly in the valuation of those businesses currently. So any, anybody out there that's looking to potentially make an acquisition or anything like that um, can take advantage of, of, of low valuations. And um, with vulnerabilities, um, I think it's think it's critical there that we only focus on a few. So obviously, looking at the what what are the most um, the areas that business is most vulnerable, and the how would suggest about going about this is your, is your traditional SWOT analysis. So looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, your threats, and um, but taking that a step further. So not just looking at um, those four components as isolated isolated list, but really taking a strategic spot analysis. So um, this is something I know Brent's done a lot with his clients, um, but um, you know, looking at how you can use your strengths to leverage those opportunities, um, you know, looking at, looking at how you can leverage your strengths to overcome your weaknesses and um, ensuring that your weaknesses don't, um, don't disrupt your ability to leverage opportunities and also having a plan that if um, any threats combine with your weaknesses, how you're going to overcome that. So um, any thoughts there, Brent, before we move on, just in that strategic spot? No, I think so. Yeah, so, so what, you're, what we're really saying is in that strategic spot, you've got your four quadrants. Um, once, you've, you know, in, once you've identified the key, key action items or key items for each of those quadrants, then you can start to you know, really combine those quadrants to come away with a, an action plan for the next, next month. Yeah, absolutely. That's excellent, Brent. So with that, we're going to move on to um, to, to, to a concept that, um, in my opinion, is absolutely genius, which Brent's been doing with his clients, which is the idea of maintaining a risk register. So um, with that, um, I'm going to hand over to Brent. Thanks, John. So this is this idea of a risk register is is all about just identifying risks in the business um, in a list and rating them um, by you know, the likelihood of a risk happening and then the consequences of that risk if it is left unchecked. And then we end up with a, a system where we're rating our risks um, by the highest likelihood and the biggest impact and coming up with strategies to mitigate them. Um, now, to try and simplify the process, um, you know, we've, we've got a bit of a template together um, and we've we've st started to categorise risks in a couple of different areas. Um, so, for example, if you the first one I think is so governance, all right. And, and so risks around governance include things like poor planning, um, a lack of up to a lack of policy or out of date policy, um, or poor discipline. Um, you know, around working on the business rather than in it. So getting caught up in the whirlwind. So they're, they're you know, risking come across around governance. Um, the next area is leadership. And so that includes um, you know, risks around just communication with the, with the staff and the team um, and, and the reporting that goes along with, you know, the plans that you're trying to roll out as well as you know, maintaining the morale on the team. The next area of risks that we look at is just around products and services. So risks around you know, lack of innovation with products or having you know, a lot of your operations tied up around one specific product. So you know, the old Pareto rule. Uh, the next one is you know, operational. So is it, what, what risks are there around your suppliers and around your supply chain, um, around contracts, around key, um, key customers? So those those sorts of risks. Um, the next area was marketing. Um, so risks around you know poor return on investment. So not tracking that you're getting a return from your marketing spend. Um, and the key here that we really found is you know about not um, you know not so much cutting costs but increasing return on investment from from marketing um, and and you know a lack of digital presence. 
Our next area was sales. So what rich are there around sales? Do you need to adapt to online selling, which has been a common one? Um, you know, rich around just poor training, overselling, you know, to people. Um, there's a lot of activity in the market and, you know, increasing competition. Um, next one was finance. So, you know, are we undercapitalized? Do we have sufficient cash flow? Um, do we have a good good structure of products to support our financing needs? You know, how's our cr credit control, our debt management? Um, you know, do, how's our reporting and forecasting going? So, is there any risk there that we need to address? Next one was HR. Um, so, you know, have, are we overspending? Do we have, you know, is there? Do we have someone to support us if there's any any grievances or disputes? The next one was admin. Um, so, you know, yeah, have we have we properly automated? Is there any risks around that as, you know, we're sort of ties in with HR as well, key personnel. Then the final one was technology. So, you know, do we have good good technologies? Any do you have redundancies built in? Do things go wrong? So those are the sort of ten key areas of risk that we look at and it kind of ties in with the you know, 10, 10 key areas of organization structure. Um, you know, when we when we do our organisation and structure reviews, um, which is probably a topic for another day. Um, but the main thing is that we've identified those risks and categorised them appropriately. And as part of our business recovery plan, uh, we have a plan in place to mitigate each and, and uh, contain each risk, if you will. So once you've identified all the risks, you need to, and, and you've been through your budget, you've got the key figures you need to track, you've identified your opportunities. Um, that now it's all about pulling it all together into a plan with some with some goals and some actions and and people um, you know people assigned to them. So so this this business recovery plan that we're talking about today it's it's a bit more detailed than your business plan. Um, you know, a, a business plan you know previously we might have put together a business plan um, for three years, uh, whereas at, at this stage what I find is you know no one can forecast that far ahead. So this business, this business recovery plan is just a bit more detailed. It's looking, you know, looking 12 months ahead and then breaking it down um, and, and getting into the detail of what you need to do in each department of your business. So we're setting goals that are smart. Um, no doubt everyone's come across that before. They're specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, and they're realistic and they're time bound. Um, and, and that's obviously required to, you know, we, we can sit here and talk about plans all day all day long, but unless you know, unless they're actually actions, then then it's pointless. Um, and so, what we're suggesting is that you know these these goals and actions that you set out, they're updated regularly into a form of a you know, regular review process. So you set a bit of a meeting rhythm um, around these the goals and actions. Um, you know, and, and we'd recommend a you know monthly sort of review um, for at least six months, and then move accordingly after that to make sure it stays on track. So now, just to just to quickly you know, pull this into a complete package, um, so your business recovery plan should include a, your personal budget and a review of that, your risk register, um, and then your business recovery plan. So that that's the document that that where you've documented all your all your goals, a forecast. So making sure that it's it's achievable, um, an updated organisation chart. Um, so you make sure you've got the right people in the right seats and the and the place is fully resourced. And if you, as a result of doing your business recovery plan, you decide you do need extra finance um, to, to you know, achieve your goals, um, you know, a, a, and a finance application as well. And so, so you may not need to do all of this work at the same time, um, but, but the, the key is that you've got a plan in place and what's going to happen and when. So we've, we've got together just a bit of a, just to give you a good idea of where to start and what it looks like, we've got a bit of a plan put together for you. So typically as part of um, putting together a business recovery plan, we'll start off with an, you know, an executive summary. Um, and so, so this is looking at a, you know, first of all, we summarize what's happened to the business, where it's been and, and why we've been impacted. Um, and, and, and it's important to, you know, basically put a stake in the ground so that means you can look back and see you know, and see how you've how you've gone. You, know, you want to know that you um, that you're progressing. 
So now the next thing is we, we got our, our key figures out of the previous exercise that we worked through, so our budgeting forecast and put in you know, where we're going to be in a year's time and three years time. And new finance needed, um, that typically that sort of comes in at the end once we've identified particularly you know, things around opportunities and where investments are required. Now, following this, um, you know, then we start to put pull together. So, based on our, you know, our um, budget, start to pull together what our what our break even looks like, and, and this comes straight out of the, the budgeting exercise that we've worked on previously. Then, then once we've put together, you know, what it's going to look like for the twelve months, we start to break it down quarter by quarter, and and this is just so important, so we know whether that we're keeping on track throughout the year. Once we have got together our um, our, you know, our budget and, and split it down into the quarters, then we start to look at what critical KPIs we need to be achieved. And I think the important thing to note here with these critical KPIs is that the they are what's known as lead indicators. So we, we do know that if we hit these KPIs, then these the, the budget or the forecast figures that you got in there, they're all but guaranteed to be achieved. Um, you know, so so a net profit is the result, but these KPIs are what we need to achieve, you know, on a, on a regular recurring basis to achieve that result. Um, so then we've we've mapped out our opportunities as well. And, and our, our vulnerability, so as as which has come out of the section that Jonathan was speaking about, and our opportunities and vulnerabilities, um, and then we've we've mapped out, you know, what what the challenges are as well. So that's the strategic side of it. What you know, combining those opportunities with our with our strengths and so on. So I think you know what we've seen is that um, you know business development at its very core can be can be broken down into three key areas. It's, it's planning, so putting together the plan of, of what's going to happen, and then it's forecasting, so putting some numbers around that plan to make sure it's realistic, and then just that ongoing reporting and accountability. So that is making sure that it happens. Um, so I skipped over this. So the final part of it was, yeah, so this is all just come out of our risk register. So these are risks that have been identified and we've started to list out some some strategies to address each one of those. So put down, you know, what we want to be, um, what we want to have covered off on on our risk in twelve months' time, and then you know, once again, milestones. So breaking it down, what's one thing we're doing ninety days that will get us towards that final, you know, final resolution, that risk minimisation, and everything has uh, a name against it as well as a date. To make sure to make sure that things happen. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so this is still just running through our risk register. So next steps. Do you want to run through that, John? Yeah, sure. So thanks for that overview, Brent. And um, as you can imagine, that's an incredibly powerful document for any any management team to have. And as Brent emphasised, if there is that. Um, if there is a cadence of accountability, if there is a regular meeting and reporting structure in place to make sure those things are actioned, um, I guess you're really eliminating any chance of failure, or at least you're eliminating any chance of anything happening untowards that you haven't foreseen previously. If that risk register is up to date, um, and if you are um, if you are running the business by the lead measures, as, as, as Brent said, um, then then the advantage is that everything else just falls out the bottom. So next steps is, I guess, just a reminder that doing nothing isn't an option. Um, we're seeing too many businesses, um, not our clients, but we're seeing too many businesses, I guess, um, being irreparably impacted by COVID. And um, as Brent used the analogy before, put on your own oxygen mask first. There's a reason why they do that. Um, but while they say that, obviously, um, without yourself looked after, you can't be looking after anybody else. So make a plan. Obviously, um, we've found our plan works particularly well, but um, but but some sort of plan is better than better than no plan. Clearly, and another point I'd just like to make is focus on what you can do. So there's a lot. Obviously, we can't do. There's a lot we can't control. But um, 
we can, you know, we can focus on what we can implement internally. We can focus on our expenses. We can focus on what we can manage internally, and um, we can focus on the opportunities that can be leveraged as leveraged as well. And then finally, um, a bit of a shameless plug here: um, get help ideally from us. And um, obviously, Brent's had a lot of experience in delivering these, um, as has the rest, rest of the team, and would love to help you in. Um, in your own recovery out of out of out of the COVID crisis, so a bit of a um, bit of an offer here um, for those who've joined us in the webinar today, and we're currently offering three solutions here of um, how you can potentially potentially move forward. So we're offering you a business recovery planning session, which will see you walk away with a document exactly how um, exactly like the one Brent's just presented. That would be facilitated by us, um, prepared by us. Um, with action on moving forward and that um, that set meeting agenda. So um, as a bit of a COVID special, we've been charging our clients two and a half thousand dollars for this. Um, however, for those attending today, if they're interested, we will do that for one thousand eight hundred plus GST. too. Um, the other option is that we can, um, if you are looking at putting together your own plan, um, we're happy to, to 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 provide some feedback on that, which is essentially. Um, an, an online meeting where we'll um, review the plan you've come up with and from the outside looking in, offer some, offer to challenge that from a numbers perspective and, and really assess its sustainability. And then third, um, for those that are adventurous and um, and happy to give it a shot themselves, um, where we've got a complimentary recovery checklist that outlines some, some, um, some, some clear risks. So um, before we move on to to um, 20 questions, which a few have trickled through already. Um, you, may have seen, um, you may have seen that we've just launched a template here, uh, a, a, a poll online. Um, if you are interested, uh, feel free to reach out. You're not locking yourself into anything, but, um, but seeing a few responses come through now, which is, which is, which is awesome. We'd love to help you out. Um, and yeah, we're really keen to, um, to jump, on, jump on board and, um, help you guys and Brent. It looks like um, you've got a busy few weeks ahead of you with, um, <laughs> with uh, doing business recovery plans, which is awesome. Uh, full marks to everybody that's that's proactive and jumping on that. Um, guarantee you won't be sorry. So I'm um, going to close that poll now. If if you think about it and um, decide that it's something you want to go ahead with, by all means, reach out to our office um, anytime, and, and and we can um, and we can we can take it from there. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so questions. Um, far away, if anyone has any questions, um, we're willing to take them now. I'm just going to pull up a few that have, that have come in already. Um, ready, Brent. Um, as said, there's, you've got a Q&A button there on the screen, so let's got that. Anyone's got any questions, feel free to, to jump in now. So, um, first question, first cab off the rank. There's a question here, Brent. Um, so with so much up in the air at the moment, how can I accurately forecast sales? So, um, great question. Um, yes, yeah, it's a really good question. I think, f first of all, what, what I usually say to people is you know, focus on what you, what you can control. So, um, you know, income, can, at times, there, there's certain things we can do to, to keep, you know, to um, achieve a, a you know, certain sort of forecast level. Of income, but the one thing we can do is we can control our expenses and we can forecast our expenses. So, like we ran through an exa example earlier, um, you know, get through put put in all your expenses into your forecast and know what your survival break even is. Um, you know, when it comes to income, you know, make sure you've got your best case scenario and and worst and medium and worst case scenario. Uh, once you start to build some scenario plans. Um, then you can you know see see where you're fitting and, and make adjustments on the fly so so you don't you know, come off the rails. Um, yeah, that's excellent. One thing I'd add there as well is that while we're not while we're not suggesting for a second the business owners get totally bogged down in the detail, um, there's nothing wrong as well with having a few different scenarios um, and forecasting for that. So obviously you know what you think is achievable and sort of a bit of a baseline for what um, you know a bit of a worst case scenario also best case scenario and sort of modeling the business um, accordingly. And we've mentioned it in previous webinars, but then off the back of that, 
Um, you can look at, I guess, come up with a bit of a hit list so that you know if, um, if, if sales drop by X amount, um, what associated costs need to be made to the overheads. Um, but doing that in a systematic and disciplined way so that you're protecting the core business, not just making wild cuts to overheads without too much thought. Okay, so um, another question here, Brent. Um, who should we get involved in the business recovery planning process? So I'm um, taking it that this is kind of, you know, is this a whole team thing? Is this a management team thing? Is this a, you know, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, you've got to be, uh, I think you've got to be mindful of who's, who's in the room. Um, just from the point of view is that other, if you have too many, the, you can end up going all, all day by the time you've been through everyone's opinions. Um, generally, would recommend just the, you know, your, your core management team are in the room and and to get your plan in place and so that it will include you know the, the leadership as well as your you know sales um, sales manager and, and operations leader um, and then we'll, but main thing is that just once you've got your plan together um, that you're you've communicated it to the team and they understand exactly where you're going um, and also you've mapped out your milestones and communicated that with the team as well. Um, so everyone knows what the end goal is and you know how you're tracking against those against those milestones too so you know as soon as possible if you're getting on track like we said earlier and um yeah by all means don't understand um don't sorry don't underestimate the ideas can actually come from the team as well so be open to feedback there um you know we're seeing some businesses implement some pretty impressive changes that have you know come from those on the ground dealing with customers on day-to-day -day basis so i guess um, yeah, don't be entirely fixed on on the ability to set the overarching strategy, and, and definitely have that have that feedback loop there. Um, another great question has come in, and that is, how do we make sure any plan actually gets implemented? So that's where most plans fall down, um, if we're honest. So, um, any any ideas off the top of your head there, Brent? Yeah, it's we've touched on it very very briefly, but um, we always fall back to the methodology set out in the four disciplines of execution which is a book by Sean Covey and it, and it just comes down to you know first of all um, there's a bit also a bit of working out first of all if you focus on you know what needs to be done um, you know things can end up getting off track so so basically you know just straight away moving into the how of how, how you're going to do something um, whereas that the action of planning really comes down to, first of all, identifying where we are now, and then setting out some numbers around where you want to be. And then, so this is before you jump into the how, so making sure you identify where you want to be, and then start working on that on that how, and breaking those into you know bite-sized chunks. As I always say, how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. So it's about where, where do you want to be? What's, what's this? And, and this is really the pl power of planning. Um, breaking into those, you know, we often work with weekly milestones, um, and so add that into your regular, um, you know, meeting rhythm of you know catch up. So if, if it's a daily huddle or a weekly huddle, I um, mean, you know, how are we going on our um, core milestones that need to be achieved each week? You know, it's so often so easy to get caught up in the whirlwind, but it's just about taking that time of stepping out of the whirlwind and working on those key milestones. And that's really the key to implementation. That's excellent, Brent. And accountability is so powerful, isn't it? Um, just having that visibility of who's responsible and um, when it's when it needs to be done by. Um, nobody wants to be the weakest link in the team that's doing everything they can to ensure a solid financial future for everybody. So um, yeah, just having that level of visibility as well is always very powerful. Um, another question's popped in, um, and it's just regarding. Um, an acquisition of a business. Can you help with this? Absolutely, we can. Um, it's something we have had a lot of experience with is the is whole business business acquisition due diligence um, process. So by all means, um, reach out to us and we can discuss that further. We'd love to love to help. Um, and then the last question for now is: If I need funding in a hurry, what's my best approach? So I'll take it this is a business that. Um, either has seen a massive opportunity or um, is, is in a bit of trouble and they need funding. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, look, we, we've seen um, you know, when banks have been approached for finance, when there's more applications than there is uh, credit available, the businesses with a 
plan for how they're going to bounce back. Um, a bit of a you know, war game, if you like, war strategy. They're, they're the ones that get prioritised access to capital. So sometimes, you know, you, obviously you've been, you've been buffeted around a bit by these conditions through the pandemic. Um, and sometimes, you know, the numbers aren't looking so great over the last few months. But having a business recovery plan is just so powerful in the eyes of a, of a bank manager. They can see that you've got a plan um, and they can see, you know, what, where you're headed. And it's almost, you know, they, they get a, almost emotionally invested in where the business is going and you're much more likely to secure that, that finance. Yeah, 100%. And it could be worth anyway um, if, you do have a, if you do have a relationship with your banker, um, even if you don't need the finance um, initially sitting down with them once you've prepared the plan to explain to them where you're heading with the business and when you may need funding. Um, as we've said a lot of times before, um, in a cash flow crisis, there's no, is, is no time to introduce yourself to your yeah. bank manager. Um, so having that conversation with them, with them early, and um, I guess also not being afraid to to seek some help um, there as well. We we assist businesses with with applying for finance. We also work with large network of brokers to assist assist people in that regard as well. So I guess it's just making sure that you're on the on the front foot to start with. And um, no other questions have come in, so I'd say it looks like. Um, Looks like we're pretty well done. We just wanted to leave you um, with a bit of thought here, and that is nothing so contagious as enthusiasm, which um, which even more contagious than COVID. So yeah, be that. Um, but I think it's I think the point we're trying to make here is that if you think about um, if you think about a business that's confident with where they're at financially, a business that has a plan to mitigate risk, a business that does have a plan to move ahead, um, it does. Incredible things to the whole culture, the culture of the organisation. It gets the whole team bought into it, and that in itself is just such an incredibly powerful thing at the moment when you've got so much uncertainty. Don't you think, Brent? Yeah, hundred percent. It's all about getting buy in. Exactly, hundred percent. So, um, with that, we'd like to thank everybody for attending today. It's been great. Um, hope you know. Hope um, hope you've learnt, left with some action items and a bit of a plan. Um, moving forward, for those um, for those that have reached out to us um, for assistance, there we'll be in touch with 